So welcome to this uh, brief demonstration of the Sasha Co machine by Baby Lock. I'm going to start off with a couple of samples just to give you an idea of what this machine is capable, which is huge. Uh, I have uh, a lot of respect and gratitude for the teachings of Evie Hawkins. This is her book, Sasha Co Technique. She also has another book called Garden Motifs that I've used in the past. Uh, I had the pleasure of attending a couple of her classes at Baby Lock Tech uh, many years back. And I like this book because it goes beyond just putting Sashiko stitches down. It uses the Sashiko stitch in very interesting ways, and I'll show you some examples of that. But her book is very well illustrated. It shows a little bit about the machine, but most importantly, it starts to go over like her flip techniques using yarn, single and double flips with good illustrations. She does a lot with garments, um, very impressive um, uh, garments that I've seen her do, uh, shadow work techniques um, and things of that nature. But this is a good book if you're going to be using uh, the machine for doing things in addition to the Sasha Co um, technique. Um, it's a good book that gives you some great illustrations. This first sample I want to show you, this was a sample that was done Oh uh, gosh, many years back, it's, I'm kind of scooching this around so you can kind of see it. This is as far out as that camera's going to go for me. But it is um, using a machine called the Baby Lock Embellisher, which was a uh, needle felting machine. There are some manufacturers that still make them. Uh, this was very big in the late 1990s and it, up into 2010 or so. Uh, I enjoy the machine for making fabric. Uh, this is all wool felt that was embellished or fused down with this uh, multi-needle uh, barbed machine. But why I'm showing you this sample is there are sashiko stitches that are being done here. And let me go ahead and zoom in just a little bit with this, just so you can appreciate the stitching. I love the machine because it creates a distinct stitch and a distinct space and you can adjust both the space and the stitch for what your particular needs or look that you're going for. You might also see that the rows here are fairly evenly spaced and that is done with a quilting bar that rides on the back of the ankle of the machine similar to what we would use when we quilt with a quilting bar on our sewing domestic machines with a walking foot for instance. So the threads that you can use with the Sashiko machine are uh, wide and varied. Uh, generally speaking, you're going to want to make sure that you don't get too heavy for the threads. Let me see if I can back out here just a little bit. Um, this is uh, using metallic threads here uh, in the machine. And this uh, metallic thread, I believe it's a 40 weight thread. The heaviest that you can go in the machine per manual is a 30 weight thread. You can go as light as a 100 weight. Uh, a 60 weight thread is generally like a, um, a lace weight fill or bobbin fill uh, type of uh, thread. Your embroidery thread is generally around a 40 weight and your um, Generally, when I piece a quilt, I'm using a 50 weight thread. So a 30 weight, the lower the number, the thicker the thread. A 30 weight is as thick as you want to go. And also, do take note that when you're looking at these Sashiko stitches, let me zoom in here just a little bit. Uh, when you look at these Sashiko stitches, understand that with every one of these stitches, it's actually two lengths of thread per stitch. So even if off the spool, you might be thinking, I don't know if this thread's going to have the thickness impact that I'm looking for my project. Understand that you really need to look at two strands put together because these are two strands together. Um, this yarn was couched down along the perimeter of this applique using uh, the Sashiko machine. And also the, um, this was just a little embroidery design that was put on it just for effect. So you can combine techniques. So we have Sashiko, we have some yarn couching, and we have uh, embroidery. So this is an example of using the Sashiko machine and couching down yarns. So let me kind of zoom in here. That must be where we'd want to be. So this is using um, two different yarns. One that's once the, the green one's a little shiny. That's a rayon yarn. And then this is an acrylic yarn that I'm using up here. 
and it's pretty much the same weight, but you can use different weights of thread. And all of this couching, this was not done with a sewing machine. This was all done using the sashiko machine. If you look down at the stem, the stem was via a bias strip, so you can see how I can get a nice curve here. And you can appreciate, I hope, that with the sashiko stitching that's done to couch down this bias strip, that it's pretty, um, pretty evenly placed between the edge of the bias and where the stitching is. And that's done because the sashiko machine has a clear foot on it, which makes it easy to navigate. This is an example of um, an applique. So inside, these yarns were couched down again uh, with the machine. I have some under stitching here that was done with the sashiko machine. And then this was done um, off site. So uh, this was a a secondary element that I did the stitching on and then I couched it down using the sashiko machine at the end so that's why this lifts up of course and then this last flower here you've got all of these nice loops of uh, ribbon that were couched down with the sashiko machine this is some embroidery that was done here so again you can combine techniques you don't have to use just one machine or technique on a project but I know many of you already know this and again couching down yarns just to kind of give you an idea of what this looks like in its total. Let's back out. This was from one of the samples from Evie's book. Again, the background was couched down with the Sashiko machine. So this was a, a bold print, and we used the bold print as inspiration. Let me just kind of flip it this way just because I can. And again, the same type of thing where we're doing a applique yarn couching. Notice that in the case of this little bud here, the different weights of the of the yarn. So like this white yarn up here, this is, um, I'm going to say this is even probably lighter, let's call it a sock yarn, but I think it's a little lighter than a sock yarn, uh, maybe more like a lace weight yarn, and this is more like a worsted weight uh, acrylic type here. And again, another example of couching down ribbons, etc using that sashiko machine. In this example, let me back out just a bit. In this example, we're again couching down uh, the yarns, but instead of having the loops on the perimeter free, uh, they're also stitched down. So the initial loops were sashikoed in place and then the, uh, the yarn was brought out and again, Sasha code around the perimeter, so this is all where it, uh, where it lays out. They're not free floating, in other words. Down here, this we hadn't seen yet, so let me come in closer. And this is an example of cross stitch using the Sashiko machine. This last little bud shows another technique, and in this case, what I'm doing is these little yellow uh, spokes coming out from the center of the flower. This was all stitched, you again, using the Sashiko machine, and it looks like it's hand-picked. But again, all done by machine. This bag, again, the bag was made um, using a printed fabric. Uh, I couched some beads on the centers here, so there's like little beads, so you can kind of see it, there's like dimension to that with the bead work. And then here again, couching yarns around the printed flower that's printed on the fabric. And then this is some meandering that's done with the sashiko machine. And I show you this only because I wanted you to understand that you don't have to just couch or stitch in a straight line when you're using this machine. There is a presser foot height uh, setting on the machine that I'll show you when we go to the machine. And with that, it allows me to do more free motion type of stitching with the Sashiko machine. Um, here, this is using yarns once again, but it's doing it in what they call a cross-flipped pattern. So you're getting kind of these looped uh, edges here. I've made garments where I've had on the cuffs trim similar to this. And people asked, where did I buy the trim? And it was just a cone of yarn, in essence. And just as the application with the Sashiko machine that throws the eye. 
and people think it's a store-bought trim. When I was with Evie uh, Hawkins in her class at Baby Lock Tech, we made this very interesting uh, sampler. Let me see how far I can back out. Pretty good. So it, in essence is spelling Sashiko, I hope, Sashiko. And each of these letters is giving us different techniques. So what I want to do is I'm going to zoom in a little closer and talk about each of these techniques. So in this first one, this letter S, this is actually biased fabric. Uh, and so uh, over the years, this has got to be at least, I'm going to say, nine years old, ten years old. Um, this, uh, because it's biased, it doesn't ravel, it doesn't fray. It's a woven batik fabric. Um, and what happened was, you can see the sashiko stitching is kind of running up the center of this letter S. And the technique is how you can ruche or create pleats on the machine by taking fabric and pushing it into the, um, the presser foot. So you can do all of your ruching without using a pleater, say, on your machine. This is an example, again, of stitching with yarns. In the uppercase with the letter A, we have just one color yarn, and I used a white thread, so we have a contrast there. Let me get in just a little closer so you can see. Yeah, so the letter A has kind of a white thread that's, that um, couches it down. And in the, the bottom letter, the letter S, what we're having here are two, two yarns. Uh, one of them is uh, pink and the other is blue, as I'm hoping you can see. And that is, uh, let me get a little closer, yeah, pink and blue. And so uh, that's a way of using two yarns and couching them down with the machine. This letter H, I'm just going to stay in at this zoom level because um, the H is not the important thing. Uh, I just used a pinking shear to make this edge, of course, so it wouldn't fray. But you can again see the nice straight lines of sashiko stitching fairly evenly spaced throughout, and that is because we can use the quilting bar on the machine. So if you're doing background quilting on a project, that quilting bar certainly does come in handy. You can also, let's go into the letter I here, uh, you can also quilt on the diagonal couching it down around the perimeter. And then the top, the little dot on the eye, this is yarn that was couched on top of the applique fabric. Going over to that letter K, here we're seeing, I'm going to back out just a tad, here we're seeing that you don't have to just do straight lines, you can also do curved lines. And again, that is because of that ability to adjust the pressure foot height on the machine. This other part of the letter K is again giving us an example of the um, really cool looking uh, cross stitching. Let me get in a little closer so you can see. So yeah, the little crosses with that. I just think that's such a cool effect. Again, all this is done on the Sashiko machine. There's no hand stitching here. And then the last thing I want to show is the letter O. And again, this was yarn that was uh, serpentined back and forth, stitched down on the center, a loop was taken across, and it was stitched again using the Sashiko machine. So here is the Sashiko machine, or I should say a cover that I made for it. I used an embroidery machine to do this design here with a little bit of bling. And this background stitching was actually done using a uh, template. And I used a water-soluble marker to mark the lines and then used the Sashiko machine to do the stitching in this traditional pattern. So without further ado, let me take the case off. And here's the machine itself. Now, the controls on the Sashiko machine are relatively straightforward. Uh, on the right side of the machine, there is going to be a hand wheel. On the side of the machine, there's the power cord and a foot control that you plug in, just like on any other machine. There's the on-off switch as well. On the bottom here, there is a little um, accessory compartment. And in the accessory compartment, you're going to have all the various tools that you need, including spool caps, extra needles. The machine comes with three additional needles. They are a size 18 
uh, US, which is about a 110 um, in the metric system. So it is kind of a top stitch quality needle. The needles are very uh, unique, and I'll show you a close up of that as we move forward here. And there's also extra guide wires, and you can buy additional needles and guide wires, and I would highly recommend. There's also things like little brushes to clean the tools and um, things of that nature. There's also a quilting bar that you can put on the side of the machine when you're doing your um, your straight rows of stitching, so channel quilting in essence. I'm just going to put this little guy back to where it belongs, but that's there. There are two controls here. One of them controls the stitch length, as said here, and the other controls stitch spacing. And these can be controlled or moved independently of one another, which is one of the charms of the Sashiko machine. In essence, you can have a longer space and a shorter stitch or vice versa with a longer stitch and a shorter space. The world is your oyster when it comes to that. On the left you're going to see the mode button. The mode button is just a single button but it does a couple of important things. Currently the machine is in the needle down position. If I wanted to bring it to the needle up position I push this once. The needle will move itself and get itself reoriented so now every time I let my foot off of the foot control uh, the needle will stop out of the fabric. Conversely, if I push this once, the needle always stops down in the fabric. There is also a mode where uh, it's called the Evie Hawking mode, and this is a specialty stitch mode. And how you get into that is you double click the machine, and you'll see that the needle uh, indicator now blinks. And what this is telling me is every time I push down on that foot control, the needle will take a stitch, a space, and stop. I can then do things like twist yarn around the needles or ruche fabric up against the foot and when I press the foot control again the needle will once again take a stitch, a space, and stop. When I want to get out of that mode I simply press it a second time and it goes out of that mode and back up into the needle out position. So I'm going to hold the camera as steady as I can just to kind of show you what's upstairs on this. There is a bobbin winder. This takes a class 15 bobbin. It's those clear bobbins that you'll see like in Baby Lock and Brother Machines and Janome Machines. It's a very common bobbin. Nothing special about the bobbin. The bobbin case, however, extremely special and we'll see that as we move forward. There is a spool pin up here. Normally you would think that's where you carry the thread for your needle, but there is no thread that's threaded through the needle. This is simply to hold the bobbin, uh, excuse me, the spool of thread as you wind a bobbin. There is a pretension for your bobbin here here. This little thing here, it's like a little bridge. This, by this screw here, you can make this bridge go up or down, and that just makes the bobbin itself, when it's hitting the, uh, the thread, when it hits the bobbin, to wind more evenly. There is a control here. This control controls the foot pressure, just like any other sewing machine. You can control the foot pressure. Anything that is dark colored, like this is the number five that's dark, this is generally known as the default position for this particular machine. As I increase the number, it will go and increase the pressure, and conversely, if I go to a lower number, that decreases the pressure. This is just a thread guide that takes the bobbin thread from the spool pin back over to the pretension up on the bridge and then again to the bobbin. And when you have guide lessons with me or one of the other capable educators at Steve Sewn Vac, when you get the machine, they will absolutely go over all of this. But I will also do content specific for this machine for the store as well because I enjoy the machine. I've had the machine ever since it's it's been out. On the side here, there is a control that controls the uh, foot pressure. Excuse me, the foot uh, height. And what I mean by that is uh, if I wanted to sew just straight lines, I would want this presser foot pressure to be at that zero mark. Notice how that zero is dark in color versus the one which is not dark in color. So this is again a default position for the machine. So when I talk about um, changing the uh, pressure foot height, just know that I'm on the side of the machine versus pressure foot pressure which is on the top of the machine. Far left there is a thread cutter. The thread cutter is also what holds onto the thread. Notice that I don't have thread here currently because I lost the thread when I was playing with the mode button, but we'll show you how we get that back in a bit. 
down here, this is our stitch plate, and it is marked in increments, like you would imagine. It's they're all uh, imperial markings, so quarter inches to the quarter inch, three eighth, half, etc., to the right, as well as to the left. This is the standard presser foot. Uh, that comes with the machine. I'm going to set the tripod down and then redo this so you can kind of see where I am at here. And I can hold this a little steadier that way. So let me zoom in just a bit here. Okay. So what you have here is uh, this is the ankle. There's a little button here that will hold this. Um, this uh, foot flat. Uh, if I am stitching over something that is a little thick, let me just go into the needle down position by pushing that mode button once. So this again is just holding this down flat. I'm going to lift the presser foot height and how I'm doing this again is by that control on the side of the machine. Notice down here that as I turn this, do you see how the pressure foot itself is lifting up? And I just needed to lift this up a bit to show you what this uh, button does. This is kind of like a puddle jumper. We have these on some of our machines. I've seen these on Janome machines and um, uh, Bernina machines and Brother machines, etc. And what happens is if you have um, something thicker coming into the machine and it's lifting this presser foot up like so. You want to keep the foot itself level so if I hold this button in and then put a little pressure onto the front of the toe of the foot. Notice that as my finger goes to the back of the foot that button is going to pop back out and so as I come back against the machine see how it just popped out. So this works just very similar to any sewing machine uh, out there that has that type of feature. I'm going to just bring down the height of that presser foot. I am taking the um, needle and bringing it back out of the fabric and I'm also going to just lift up the presser foot. And so there's a lever on the back of the machine that lifts up the foot. And if you push higher up on that back lever, you see how it lifts the foot just a little bit higher. So that's very similar to any sewing machine. Now, what makes the, the Sashiko machine very unique is this machine was actually made in, or is made in the same factory as the fabulous sergers that Brother makes or excuse me, that baby lock makes actually. And like a serger has two loopers, an upper and a lower looper, this machine actually has two loopers. They call it something else like a thread grabber, what have you, but there's a, uh, a little arm here that you can see. Here's the needle. And then right up here, I'm going to see if I can get just a little lower here. And let me bring this back this way. A little lower yet. Yeah, so right here there is a guide. If I pull this guide down and over to the side, do you see how there is a, it's like a what they call a, a guard that goes up against the um, the needle itself and this is what allows the machine to catch the thread and to release the thread. It's the combination of this grabber and this needle guard here. So if I bring this pressure foot down, let me just see if I can bring this a little further out. So maybe you can see that a little bit easier. Okay. So right here there is a little opening. So it's as if there's like the letter, um, the the eye of the needle uh, is almost like the letter the, the the letter C. So it's it's kind of like this, and that thread is actually put into the needle and taken out by a combination of this guard lifting up out of the way, which exposes this opening, and this guard here coming and taking the thread in and putting the thread back in. To that eye. I'm going to put the guard back into posi position, but you've got a couple extra guards here. And the thing I will tell you is that if you happen to uh, bend anything or if the machine doesn't take a stitch, the guard is one of the first things that I look at that might need to be replaced. These, just like needles, are disposable, so having extras are always a good thing. So I'm just going to put that back to where that, that is. Now I'm going to come down a little bit lower and I'm going to actually grab you up here for just a moment. So I'm going to take this mode button and I'm just going to press and hold. 
and you see how there's now a green light at the bobbin case? So that in essence tells me that I'm in the position where I can open up the bobbin case and then do what I need to do with the bobbin case, like change the bobbin for instance, or pick up the thread again. So let me get down here and I'm going to open up the bobbin case area and I'm going to turn the machine a bit so you can kind of see a little bit better. So I, th I think you guys can see that pretty well. So down below there's actually uh, a couple of amazing things as well. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this latch. This is a very typical for latched machines. Uh, this is generally how these kind of bobbins kind of work. But the thing that's different about this is do you see how there's like a little brush up here? This you don't want to pull off. This needs to be here. It is actually a thread catcher for the uh, Sashiko machine so it can put the thread where it needs to put. And on the underside, this would be like the 12 o'clock position and this is the 6 o'clock position when it's in the bobbin case just to kind of orient you. But when I turn it this way, do you see how there's not one but there's two eyes? They're like uh, parallel to one another, right? And when you thread this machine, let me just take this bobbin out. So when you thread this machine, I'm just going to grab a blue thread because I think you'll see that better on camera. It's going to go into the bobbin case. Again, this is a class 15 bobbin. It's going to go into the machine just like any other bobbin cased machine. You put it under the tension spring. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take the thread and you're going to thread it from the back to the front. It needs to go through both eyes here. It needs to go through both eyes. Now before I put this back into the machine, what I want to do is show you, I showed you kind of like that upper looper by the needle. Let me show you the lower looper here. So I'm going to turn this, this hand wheel and as I'm turning this and this is moving about, do you see how there is a little guy that comes out here? That's its technical term, little guy. And the little guy has like a little spring on it here like right here, right? This is important that the thread always has a tension on here um, and I'm going to show you how we thread the machine in just a shake. But I just want to show you this is the, in essence, the lower looper and then coming up just a bit, this is the upper looper. So it's kind of, in a kind of way, like a, a serger. It has this upper and lower side to it. I'm going to shut this case. I'm going to push and hold the, um, that Bob and presenter button once again because I just need to get everything back into its original position. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this thread and pull some thread out and I'm going to thread the machine and then we'll be back on camera because again this is just an overview of the Sashika machine not necessarily a guide lesson. So be back soon. So we're back and off camera I again threaded the machine. I also put on this um, acrylic table. It uh, does not come with the machine but we can certainly order these from the Sew Steady company. There's a little opening where you can go ahead and cut the thread on the cutter. That's important because you'll do that many a times during the project. But these nice big tables just hold the weight of your quilt and I highly recommend them absolutely. So I have just a little quilt sandwich here you know, just as you would imagine and it's you know batting, backing, and uh, a top type fabric. Uh, it's not pieced, of course. Uh, well, not of course, but it's just so I don't distract from what's happening at the needle. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to zoom in on the needle, and I'm also going to bring this down just a bit. And hopefully you'll have a pretty good view of what's happening. So currently the uh, the presser foot is up and there it was a blinking yellow flashing light. Just take my word for it, it's still there. Uh, that's just telling me that the presser foot is up. And if I push on the foot control, you'll kind of hear me doing it here. The machine doesn't, doesn't move, which is good because the pressure foot uh, pressure is up and we don't want the machine to be sewing when the foot is up. So I'm going to reach to the back machine, I'm going to drop the foot down and now that light turned a solid blue which is telling me the machine will take a stitch, a space, and uh, every time I let off of the foot control the needle stops out of the fabric. So let me show you how this works. Note that the machine is going to sound a little bit different than a sewing machine because there's a lot more things going on with this. 
So it's taking a stitch, a space, a stitch, a space, and if I let off the foot control, which I'm doing right now, it stops with the foot out of the uh, fabric. I'm going to go, go ahead and stitch, and once again it does the same type of behavior, stopping out of the fabric. I'm going to push the mode button once. It's now in the down position, and every time I stop with my foot off of the foot control, you'll notice that the machine now stops in the down position. And I prefer to have the needle stopped in the down position so that I can turn and pivot, and then you can see the, the stitching here that's taking place. And if you're in one of my classes at this point in time, you'd all be going, ooh, ah, because that is a pretty impressive um, thing that the machine does. So um, if I wanted to do some type of free motion, what I would do is on that side of the machine, I'm going to go ahead and lift the presser foot uh, off uh, in between stitches. And you can see how that pressure foot is now lifting up off the table or off the fabric. And so now when I start stitching, what will happen is I have an ability to kind of turn and meander with my quilt sandwich and go in whatever direction I want. And you can kind of see that we have things like this. So that's also just a lovely thing about it. The last thing I do want to show is the um, uh, how we can stitch like with yarns. Again, a full-blown class. We would be here together for a couple hours, but I've got roughly a half hour, and I know I'm a little over time, so thank you for your patience. But what I have here is some yarn. I'm going to put this into the specialty stitch mode, which is two clicks on that mode button, one and two. It takes a stitch. It stops with the needle down. I'm going to put some yarn up to the foot, like such, and I'm going to try to keep my shoulder out of the way. The camera's right in front of the machine, so I'm kind of stitching off to the side here, so bear with me. I'm going to push my foot control down. The machine takes a stitch in a space. It stops. I just twist the yarn. The space in a stitch stops. And I'm kind of just braiding this yarn back and forth. And I'm going to do one more here. And then I'm just going to go out of that mode. I'm going to take a couple more stitches. And then I'm just going to turn so you can kind of see what's happening here as we braid with the machine. So again, this, this, um, this type of technology I think is extremely cool. This is a very special machine, um, just like the Baby Lock Embellisher, the needle felting machine, which was had 12 needles and no thread. This is another one of my oddball machines that I love. It has only one thread source. It's in the bobbin, and it does just a beautiful Sashiko stitch. So I appreciate the opportunity to explain a little bit about this machine to you, and have a good one. Bye for now.